Just a quick warning before we start. If you get this process wrong, when you're flashing the Arduino on your radio, it's possible you could brick your radio so it won't function anymore. The good news is you're unlikely to do any permanent damage to the radio or the Arduino board. And if you follow what I do in my uh, video, you should be able to restore your radio. But just be aware, if you're as unfamiliar with Arduinos as I was, and really still am, it's possible you can make a mistake. But whatever you do, it's unlikely to do any permanent damage. So before you start, I would say if the radio is working fine and you're satisfied with its performance, at the moment, I probably wouldn't upgrade the firmware. But in saying that, if you want to have a go, have a look at what follows and see how you get on. First thing we need to do is get the correct driver onto our Windows PC. Uh, without this driver, you won't be able to get the um, Arduino program to talk to your radio. And uh, not having this driver certainly for me was the was the main problem initially I had in trying to uh, to flash the firmware. So uh, you can see the site I'm on here. I'll uh, leave uh, the link in the comments. I think it's as good as any. Um, it actually uh, explains that it's uh, the driver for clone Arduino chips. I'm pretty certain it's a clone in these uh, SI4732 radios. Um, but if you scroll down a little on this one, you'll see that you've got the drivers for um, uh, Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows 7, Vista, right, right back to uh, right down the Windows line for either a 64-bit or 32-bit machine. So what I suggest is the first thing you do is install the driver for um, for your Windows machine and then we'll go on to the uh, next step. Okay, the next step, I've got my uh, radio with the uh, mini, I've got the older radio here, the one with the mini USB connector on. I've got that connected up to my uh, PC, to a USB uh, socket on my uh, Windows computer. I'm now going to switch the radio on using the rear power switch. So that's going to come on. Take a couple of seconds to uh, to boot up. There it goes, it's booting up. Um, I'll just turn the volume down so it doesn't get picked up in the mic. And let's have a look at um, our ports now. On um, We're on Windows Device Manager, as you can see. And um, we've got a comms port there, COM1, a printer port. But here's the important one, right, which means I've got the right driver on. I've got USB serial CH340 on COM4. Now, if you don't see something along these lines, uh, when you've got your radio connected, then the chances are you haven't got the driver correctly installed and you won't be able to go any further. So you want to get that driver up and running. Uh, you won't see this pop up until you plug your radio in and turn your radio on, but then you should see the CH340 on COM4, and we need to remember, or we may need to remember that COM4 uh, in, a, in a moment, but um, we know when we see that that we've got the driver correctly installed, so we've got a chance of the software uh, talking to the radio. Now for the next stage. You can see on Google here, I've done a search for PU2CLR GitHub. Uh, PU2CLR is Ricardo Karate, and um, he's written a, a library for the SI4732, SI4735 radios. And um, it's the information from this library we'll need to, uh, to start off. So we'll need to download this. If we click on the GitHub link. Let's go to the, um, the top here. We've got the SI4735 uh, library. We'll click on that. Okay. And you can see here we're at the master screen and this is where we want to be. We want to download this and we want to put it somewhere where in a directory that we'll remember because we'll have to come back to this later. You can see there's a button here that says code and a little download arrow. Okay, if we click on that, it gives us the option to download a zip file. I'm going to click on that zip file. 
click again there we are and uh, you'll hopefully see now in the uh, bottom corner on my screen I'm downloading the um, SI4735 uh, library so that's safely on my computer so we'll go off to the next stage the next stage is actually editing the file that's on our radio to talk to the Arduino board on the radio I use Arduino web editor there is an alternative which you can use that will work off when you're offline I had some issues using that so I found that uh, Arduino web editor was easier for me to use so if you put that into your Google search engine it should take you to the uh, the appropriate site we'll just uh, just enter that there it is Arduino editor now I've already registered the site when you first go to this site it will ask you um, for an email address and allow you to choose a password and then you've got an account uh, once you've uh, gone through that process it only takes a, a minute or two you will um, be okay then to um, to use the web editor so what we need to do is we need to add the library of information for the uh, for the radio that we downloaded earlier if we click on libraries um, and if we click on uh, custom here I can see we've got uh, a little note that says the uh, libraries you import from your computer will show up here just click on the uh, the arrow symbol there and uh, we'll go to uh, import We'll then find the zip file that we downloaded from um, Ricardo's uh, GitHub site. There it is, SI4735 master. I'll open that. Okay, that probably took 30 seconds or so. I imagine it depends on the speed of your internet and your machine. Anyway, it's telling us we've successfully imported that library. So that's okay okay and now under the custom tab you can see we've got PU2 CLR all right so you can see at the bottom here it says examples in bold let's click on that and uh, pardon that's the computer behind me doing something so excuse that uh, noise if we scroll down we want the one that says kits SI47XX kits let's click on that and um, AliExpress okay open that and you can see there's two here I'll just widen that a bit if you've got a radio similar to the one that I've got most people seem to have these um, it's got RDS on it on FM you know the radio database um, on FM and if we click on that okay this is now the latest sketch or bit of firmware it's called a sketch for Arduinos that uh, PU2CLR has written for this radio now there's a further update that I've shown you in an earlier video from um, uh, a couple of guys that are active on the uh, Facebook group and if you join the Facebook group you'll see that but um, even if you use that you'll still need this library and you'll still need Ricardo sketch because what my understanding of this is um, the slight update has modified the tab we can see on the screen here okay and you can actually go into some of this dialogue here and play around with it uh, this is um, for example you can you can make these buttons do um, different buttons do different things which is how I originally got uh, around my SSB problem with my radio but you will still need these other tabs that control various other things including the um, the OLED display and uh, the rotary control and things like that so um, you will definitely need to download this library as I've shown you so anyway the next thing perhaps the easiest part if we've got the correct driver on the radio on the Arduino on on the computer sorry for our radio for our Arduino board we've now downloaded the library 
onto our web editor. Um, the uh, web editor has already selected COM4 and we know our radio is on COM4 and the board is an Arduino Nano. If, if you haven't got Arduino Nano and you've got one of these radios, if it doesn't say Arduino Nano here, you're going to need to click on the down arrow and select another board and port because it's an Arduino Nano clone at any rate that these these radios use. So we want Arduino Nano. So we leave that as it is. We click the upload button. Okay. We we'll see we've got a message here you now saving on your online sketchbook. All right. And there's all sorts of things happening down here. And radio's gone quiet. I'm not sure whether the mic was picking up, but I had this radio on FM and it was just hissing away. It's gone quiet now because um, we're writing to it. Okay, and it's just rebooted itself. Okay. You may hear the hissing again. Okay, so the radio's back online and it's updated the firmware. I'll just turn that off. So that was a successful update and I'm now on the latest firmware by uh, Ricardo. Um, we'll show in another video if you can get hold of the um, the additional update from the Facebook group. What you actually have to do with that is um, on this particular tab here you overwrite all of this dialogue here with the new update but the rest of this stuff here on these tabs stays the same okay now I'm sorry for the non-technical description and anyone that knows anything about Arduino is, is probably tearing their hair out at the terminology I'm using but this is simply how I've managed to update my radio okay I hope that was of some help I hope it was clear enough because I'm a novice at this myself I appreciate any feedback. If anyone wants to tell me what I've done wrong here, what I'm doing wrong, please feel free. It'll be well received. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye. Good luck with updates.